I am very conscious uh, of being the last speaker at the end of a long debate uh, this evening, but I'm delighted to see that you all appear still to be awake, which is something that I wouldn't find in the House of Lords at the end of a long debate. Um, in truth, I have to say I accepted the invitation to be here tonight because I regard you as a bit of a light, light relief at the end of a long election campaign. I am tired of being asked how I will be voting, uh, not least because in common with inmates at Her Majesty's pleasure, members of the House of Lords have no vote in this election. And as a keen a political animal, that is difficult to bear. Um, as Steve Punt pointed out, as students in this um, great and ancient university, you will have to try hard to avoid the lure of politics. In the last parliament, over a quarter of the MPs came from Oxbridge. I'm very sorry, the stats I found didn't distinguish between Oxford and Cambridge. Twelve of our prime ministers have been members of this union, from Gladstone to Blair and, of course, David Cla Cameron. And what is this place if it isn't a rehearsal for the House of Commons? The style of debate, even the dispatch boxes, are present from Winston Churchill, I understand. The Oxford Union debates are the nursery slopes for prime minister's questions. And you will need to work very hard to avoid becoming involved. So relax, accept the fact that actually the mere fact that you're here means that you're halfway to making that decision that you want to try and be an MP. We probably have the Prime Minister of 2035 sitting amongst us here this evening. Look round carefully and, you, and remember in a few years' time. And as a modern democracy, actually we need you. You are the brightest and the best of your generation. We need you to accept the lure of politics and to get involved. But I would urge you, don't do it just yet. Go out and get a life. Because contrary to some of the things that you've been told this evening, actually, you do have to work very hard indeed as an MP. Now, in the world, according to the Daily Mail, MPs have it all. And of course, the Daily Mail must be believed. Um, MPs have big salaries, massive expense accounts, long evenings at the bar. What is there not to like about it? Why wouldn't you want to be an MP? Now, in practice, of course, the life of an MP does involve long hours. I've been fascinated by the repeated references to the rotten pay. Actually, I think the pay is quite respectable. Um, you might be able to earn more so doing something else, but I think that uh, £67,000 is probably enough to keep you from uh, total poverty. Um, and, you know, OK, it might not be the best paid job, and for reasons that we all probably remember, the expenses aren't what they were, but there are other things uh, that, that should be a compensation. Now, I also accept that there's a great deal of modern cynicism, and that's been expressed here tonight. Um, we have a daily outpouring of contempt for politicians in uh, newspapers, and indeed on the television in television interviews. Um, so you would expect, wouldn't you, that it's difficult to attract new recruits? Not so. There are currently 3,972 people out there working their socks off trying to be MPs. They are undertaking this, what must be the longest job interview in history six weeks of constant job interview. And you know, the numbers increase virtually every election. Back in the 1960s, it was considerably less than 2,000 people who put their names forward as candidates. Now we've got an eye on 4,000 putting their names forward. And as the number of candidates increase, of course, we have more parties. 
people invent new political parties. Um, the interesting thing about MPs is that their enthusiasm lasts. Clearly, MPs enjoy doing the job because they go on and on if their electorate lets them. Churchill was the champion. He was an MP for 63 years. Lloyd George clocked up 54 years. Ted Heath managed over 50 years. And I could go on and on with our long list of others. Last month saw the retirement of Sir Peter Tapsell, who was first elected in 1966. That was the year I left school and went to university. And he had been an MP all my adult life. In these days of job insecurity and zero hours contracts, I personally find the idea that you're elected for five years quite a high level of job security, something that would attract you to the role. You know, you have to be pretty naughty to get chucked out before the end of your elected five-year term. And don't just listen to me. Diane Abbott said, being an MP is the sort of job all working class parents want for their children. Clean, indoors, and no heavy lifting. So it's an attractive job for all peop from people from all sorts of backgrounds. And you know, if you really want to change society, you have two choices. One is to become ridiculously rich and spend your money on your chosen cause. And the second is to become an MP. The first one, of course, is the Bill Gates model. I think it's easier to become an MP. And MPs, contrary to what you've been told this evening, do have power, both nationally and internationally, both collectively and individually. And I don't think we should belittle the role of MPs as social workers. OK, it might be Mrs Jones's hedge today, but tomorrow it could be a life and death, is death issue. And you could go to the Citizens Advice Bureau, as we've been told, but on the other hand, they couldn't raise the issue in the House of Commons and get national publicity for it. MPs work as individual champions for causes. MPs change minds. MPs working collectively lead public opinion to major social change. In the last parliament, we had equal marriage. Going back decades, we had the abolition of the death penalty. Both of those are things where MPs were well ahead of public opinion. And as an ex-whip, I just whip, wish that the whips had the power that were ascribed to them here this evening. In practice, we have far more rebellions than that would suggest. Now, I would say to you all, do not denigrate MPs. They are the cornerstone of our democracy, their position, it should not be devalued. If we devalue them, we devalue democracy, freedom of speech, freedom of action, our say in how we are governed, our country's say in how the world is governed. This year, we're celebrating the 800th anniversary of Magna Carta. If you enter Parliament via the 12th century Westminster Hall, you feel the weight of history. Throughout that time, politics has been changing, but the principle of democracy has remained. Despite the changes, as Winston Churchill famously said, democracy is the worst form of government, except for all those other forms that have been tried from time to time. There's lots wrong with our democracy, but not the principles it's built on. And MPs elected by the people, of the people, and for the people are at the core of our democracy. I urge you to reject the motion.